right, next up, uh, congratulations to Uncle Mike. Michael Brantley retires after 15 seasons in the bigs. Five-time All-Star, a World Series champ in 2022. Pretty close in 2016 with Cleveland, obviously. But yeah. uh, Dr. Smooth, another great nickname for him. There's J.P. Morosi with the tweet. He retires with a 298 batting average over 10 mm. seasons with Cleveland and five with the Astros. Played on nine postseason teams. He was beloved. Kind of had a weird finish to his career. Still yeah. could freaking hit, though, and make mm. contact. The one other stat I'll give you is the contact rate for him. 90.8% career contact rate, which is sixth all time if you have a minimum of 6,000 plate appearances. He finishes right ahead of Kenny Lofton. So 91% of the time he made contact on an at-bat. Anybody know who he originally got traded for? If you do, Scott, don't say it because I think you're more of a historian. What, to the Astros or to who? No, when he got traded. Like who to, it was for, right? Who it was for to go to Cleveland. And where was he before that? I apologize. Where was he before he went to Cleveland? Yeah. Um, well, that might give it away. Oh, help me because I don't know. Yeah, give him the hint. Brewers. Robin Yount. <laughs> <laughs> He's I'm that old. With... No, that's, that's um, grandfather Mike. So, uh, so was it was it the big fella, your teammate? Went to the Brewers for half a season and maybe put the most over dominant. Milwaukee. Went fielder. No. My teammate. Yeah, CC. Oh, he was in the CC trade. Oh, nice. He was in the nice. CC trade. He was, was he not the player to be right. named later in the CC trade? He too? wasn't even the big. He wasn't even the big piece of the CC trade. Poor Robin now. It was that was <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, what an incredible season! What just a like the dude never even even after I was done playing and watching him play, you know he's going through injuries. You know he's going through you know back, shoulder, all the, those surgeries that he had. It never looked like there was any effort at all in his swing. And I remember his dad was my first ever big league camp hitting coach, Mickey, who ended up, you know, he was his hitting coach the whole time. And I remember him talking about just, hey, don't try too hard. Don't try too hard. You're a big fella. Don't worry about it. You can hit the ball hard. You don't have to try hard. And I'm like, okay. Well, I think his son was a better listener because <laughs> – to almost hit 300 in your career, who do you think the last the last person to retire besides Albert Pujols that was a 300 hitter? Most the, recent. The last one before Albert. Most recent. It's not me. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say Tony Gwynn. No. There's one more recent than that. Robinson Cano. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Over three bills. Man, That's what I read. You're now, I'm, now I'm not. Now I'm not. You're Mr. Ke Elias I'm not, right I'm now. Not, I'm not liking that answer. Dude, this guy, I played yeah, against. it was. It was Robbie. I played against this guy all the way pretty much through the minor leagues. And nothing. He had his facial expression never changed. He always looked like he was blowing bubbles. He always went. <laughs> <laughs> right no, before, exactly. He's like. This dude could strike out three times, which rarely happened. No, he wouldn't strike. Rarely happened. Or he'd hit five home runs and same facial expression. This is the guy I emulated because of, of that. I would get so angry at myself. I'm like, be more like Michael. Be more like – because I'd see him. This guy I looked up to, dude. This guy was phenomenal. He could hit the ball any part of the ballpark. He could drive the ball in any ball, part of the ballpark. He got his foot down early. He – the guy that could just pepper it one way. I mean, he was just phenomenal hitter. And people looked up to him, man. I just remember Triple A watching him, how smooth he was. He was coming into his own. And then in the big leagues, he just undercover, flying undercover. And then he'd take off. He's like, oh, this is the guy you'll never strike out. And when you did, it was like, whoa, holy cow. We did strike this guy out. So when this guy was hot, he was unstoppable. And it was all singles, doubles. And then he'd sprinkle in a home run here. But – Proud of him. Congratulations. Well deserved. And um, like he said, man, I have young kids now and I want to be a dad first and foremost. And you got to praise somebody like that because that's a big reason why most retire. And for the, the career he had, five all stars, kudos to you, bro. You did it right. A lot of people will commend you and I commend you. Congratulations. Agreed. Well said. Strikeouts. 
76 strikeouts was his highest ever. And that was in his third season. That was like technically my, is like that was like a month and a half for me. First full season in the big leagues. It's a month and a half for me. Winning so, player, winning hitter. Winner. Doesn't strike All around out. winner. Winning player. Hey, question for both of you guys, right? For the player perspective of what we do here. So you mentioned Brantley kind of having that chill, cool demeanor, facial expression, poker face, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. I feel like you get that a lot with players in the bigs. Not all, but right? We we say that a lot. Like, oh, you know, Corey Seager, he's just here. Even when he was in his prime, Anthony Rendon, he was really just here. Judge. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Like, does that yes. help you win? Yes. I think I can't com- do that. I couldn't do that. I don't that know what I Todd play. thinks. I don't no, know what Todd thinks, but I think I think it's confidence. Quiet the quieter, like we had Chef on yesterday. Gary Sheffield was not like super exuberant about anything. Yeah, he said everything with his chest yesterday, but like the dudes who are quiet and confident, Jeter, very rarely showed emotion. Like those guys are in it for the grind, the long haul. And to me, it is confidence. Like you know who you are. The dudes who are like, ah, ah, can't, I don't know what's going on next. Ah, this is terrible. This is tough. Those are the guys that are going to grind through their careers, and it's not going to be. It looks easy, but I've seen these dudes work in the cage. I've seen the really good hitters work in the cage, and I haven't seen any of them that don't do anything and have a career sustained success. I think you hit hit the hit it right on the head there. Confidence. Knowing that, what are you going to do, Over for 4? I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, That's not how I lived. No, I no, me that. neither. It took me a while to understand that. And then another Over for 4 came. It's like, I get him tomorrow. Then another one came. But at the same time, I'm being funny. It's just, it's just the focus and determination of knowing I've prepared myself for these moments all the time. So why do I need to get too high or too low? They always say find that happy medium. And some guys just did. And they just went like this. And they're still going that way. So, again, yeah, you got to be powerful. You got to be athletic. You got to be a ball player. And, you know, but having the right attitude can change a lot of things. Because the mind, when you play baseball, if your mind is calm, cool, and collective, usually good things happen. Not all the time, but usually they do. Yeah, but you can't change who you are. Like, if you're a if you're an energy guy, I feel like baseball changes you. Yeah. Like, you need to be who you are, and I feel like for so long, baseball has just been like, everybody stay inside the box. Hey, I, you I, I, are I, I, from the – like, be who you are. Always. But still be respectful. So, I think that's I where agree. baseball needs to continue to move, and I think we're moving in that direction. And that's why I love – honestly, that's why I love winter ball, and I think anybody who feels like – Latin oh, players God. give like too yeah. much, too much flair and all this stuff. Go to a winter ball game. Go to go live in the Dominican for six to eight weeks. Like you go to TGI Fridays and they'll put some flair on your burger when they Ooh. when they deliver it to you. Yeah, I love ta, ta, I love that. That's so, the energy I try. To, to me, I would encourage people to be who they are and not try to like fit into this mold of what yeah. they're supposed to be. I would encourage people to even go beyond that and have fun and try to show emotion and see what happens because I don't know. I think you'll enjoy it more and you'll look back and be like, Oh, I wish I had more fun. I feel like there's players I've talked to in the past that say that. And for fans, I want to see Adolis Garcia getting booed like crazy in Houston. <laughs> and he bops a homer and he's <coughs> flexing and he's running around the freaking bases. Like you just saved the world. That's Joey Votto. Joey Votto used to tell me, how do you have so much energy every single damn game? I'm like, bro, that's just how that's just who I am. That's you. And if I didn't every have game, that every day, every day, like it was <laughs> not, bro, from spring training on, if I wasn't talking in the dugout, like I'd be like, I felt like weird. Like, what am I doing? Am I sick? Like, I, I'd have to be saying something, you know, that I would, I would chirp the whole damn game. Shut up, Todd. Shut up, see, that's all it takes. <laughs> that's why he's on a show. 